Hi there, a very good afternoon to you. Welcome to today's webcast. My name is Robert Colvo, head of thelazytrader.com, and today we are going to go live from the trading floor and show you what trades we're in, how they're doing, in addition to what is looking good on the horizon ahead for the coming days and weeks. And my goodness, for us lazy traders, it has been quite an active market, believe it or not. And we're in some very good positions at the moment, and the market really is paying dividends. Please forgive the background noise. Um, our office is based between a hospital, a fire station, and a police station. So this is why we always hear these alarm bells. Okay, so quickly get us started the disclaimer, and we'll begin. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Rob Colville, head of the ladytrader.com. I've been trading for about eight years now. Um, with a real focus on end of day, set and forget trading. I, my main focus is uh, the currency market, and I trade the daily and the weekly time frame. Um, the set and forget strategies we trade and teach, um, you can apply to any um, asset class, really, whether it's stocks, commodities, global indices, whatever, really. And um, we've grown this online brand, and um, we've been featured in a myriad of publications, including FX Streets, Your Trading Edge, FX MM, Forex Peace Army, and London Investment Week. So I'm pretty sure you didn't take time out of your day to hear me talk about myself. So, <laughs> and I will go back to show you basically in the markets. Okay, so I'm just gonna let this load and we'll go to our charting software, which is eSignal. There we go. Okay, so those of you who heard us last time, we're in a couple of very good positions. I'm gonna share this one with you. It is the British pound versus the Swiss franc. Okay, and we really are, well, we had a rolling profit of about 25% with this one because of a setup which um, really kind of like made itself known to us around about Christmas time. Just before Christmas, this happened on the 1st of uh, December. And this was a reversal trade. Now, reversals are statistically a lot less likely to come to fruition than uh, trend trading um, setups by their very nature. Reversals are generally very big moves, high failure rate, but those that do succeed, their profit potential is very, very big indeed. So what we saw here, just fast wind back to the 1st of December last year, wasn't really that long ago, but we saw here this multi-year high at this level here at one spot five four seventy, and what we saw when price got up to this point on the first was the fact that we saw price come up before test it, made a higher low, and then made an all important lower high. Now this told us several things. It told us that hey, this level of resistance, the ceiling, is in the way, um, and it's still working, preventing price from going up. That's one thing. We've also got a lower high which shows us that the momentum to the upside is not as strong and that the bulls have failed to take price up above the level. And another thing is that we've got a bearish pin bar reversal here, which is our signal bar to go short. So what we said is, hey, that's great. If we've got a lower high here, this could be an acceleration point to a reversal. And we could find that price goes down and breaks this, what could be the neckline of an M-shaped formation. Some of you might know this as a double top and go all the way down because at the end of the day pound swiss at the time we're seeing this trade has just been in a range here so if it went down to even this point here risking two percent um the profit potential would have been four percent um potentially and down here we could potentially make 15 30 sorry 30 percent if it got to this level here risking two percent and if we look here at the lowest point that um, the pound has been in a long time you can see the profit potential is staggering. Bear in mind this whole looming Brexit with the potential of um, the United Kingdom leaving the Eurozone, this could be the driving force behind a weakening pound for the next year or six months at least. If we do have this referendum and if we do decide to leave the European Union, then goodness, <laughs> there's going to be some volatility. So this reversal trade, let, how does it do? Well, this happened, smash for this level and for Christmas and New Year, we really just saw it go in our favor. And we saw some hesitation over the illiquid markets. And we we're able to scale out half the position um, round about here. And we saw price ricochet at this level. It made a higher low. And we had another opportunity to sell. It went down even more. 
made a lower high, which is a confirmation of the trend now. We can get trends inside ranges. And what we are looking at is potentially another opportunity to sell a rally in a downward trend. Remember, we're now, now in a downward trend. We've got the 20 moving average below the 50, the 50 below the 200. We're already in short, risking 2%. We've bought back half the positions, so, so we've still got 1% running in our favor. So now we've got this potential opportunity here. If this closes as a bearish pin bar reversal tonight, then we've got the potential to actually sell and add to the position. Remember, we have already banked half this winning trade, so we've banked about about 10 to 15%, and we've still got our the remaining portion at break even. But what we can do now is use some of the banked profit to add to this position here. Remember, in a downward trend, you should sell rallies. Nothing ever moves down on a straight line. So markets ebb and flow. So we've got the extension, retracement, extension, retracement. So whenever we get a retracement in a downward trend, when we get the signal, it makes a lot of sense to simply buy, sorry, sell, my apologies. And when we've got a bearish pin bar reversal here, it's a sign to us that the sellers are coming back into the market after profit taking has been initiated okay so this is why in downward trends you see lower highs and lower lows nothing ever moves down on a straight line you see people selling then taking profit that's when you see the retracement and then you've got some more selling and then profit taking this is why you see the ebbing and flowing of downward moving markets like we are okay so there's potentially an opportunity tonight remember that this level the one spot 400 level is really the last level um, we have with pound Swiss until we've got this wonderful area of blank space here. There's nothing really in the way of this here. If price does close below this level, then we're going to be very happy indeed because it's a sign to us that nothing is really going to get in the way of our short trade. Remember, we're still in short from the very top with half a position running, so we can do very well from that if we get the break of the low here. Um, but we'll have to wait and see, of course. That's the thing. Um, so moving on, we are also in another trade short. This is pound Aussie on the uh, daily time frame, and this one really is coming to fruition quite nicely. Um, we, let me just go back and simulate this trade for you so you know exactly what we did. We can see here, once again, we've got this upward trending market, which is now turned into a downward trending market. We've had the confirmation of the moving average crossover, we've just had the dead cross with the 50 moving over the 200 and the 20 moving over both the 50 and the 200. And we've got key lower highs and lower lows here like so. So what it makes sense to do is to simply, like I just mentioned a pound Swiss, sell the rally in a downward trend. And this is what we're looking to do here. Okay, we've got our signal bar, which is a bearish pin bar reversal. And our typical way of trading this would be to simply trade the break of the low with our stop loss above the high. And that will give us a difference of um, about 312 pips difference between entry and stop loss. But those of you who know the brand and our style of trading, that will only give us a one-to-one -one reward to this trade. Is it really worth waiting about a week or two weeks um, on the daily time frame to realize a one-to-one -one trade? I don't think so. I think if we want to um, trade a high probability trade, it makes sense to get a more efficient entry where we could potentially get better reward to risk. So what we did in order to turn this one to one into a three to one, we simply did this. Instead of entering at the break of the low here with our stop loss above the high, what we did was we 50 fibbed it. So for those of you who don't understand what I mean by 50 fib, we just simply put our Fibonacci from top to bottom and placed our order at the 50% level here with our stop loss above the high which enabled us, instead of a 312 pip difference between our entry and our stop loss, we we're able to get uh, 142, 150 pips difference between our entry and our stop loss. So we've essentially doubled our reward to risk. So risking 2% on this trade, we could have, if we were filled at this midpoint here, it will mean that by the time the market comes down to take out what would have been the initial original, made 2%. And if it goes in our favor here, for every 150 pips um, profit it goes in our favor, we've made 2%. So the market's come down to this point here since we had a few hairy moments. So we've gone beyond one, two, three, four. We're just up to about 5% profit on this one. But remember, <laughs> this is our target one here. This is a downtrending market, so we've still got a way to go. This is our first target here. 
just above two spot hundred. This is a psychological number. It's a triple zero, which you could always reasonably expect quite a bit of um, support there. I mean, you can see that it corresponds to this swing high and this previous swing low. So we're going to see a bit of um, buying there potentially, but this will just be our first target. So when the market comes down to this point here, we're simply going to scale out of the trade, which means we'll buy back half of the profit and we'll keep in the position um, in advance of new lower low. Remember, we've got a downward channel like so. Let's copy it and see where we can potentially write this to. Okay, so mm, could even do it this way. It's the problem with trend lines. It makes the chart get very messy. Okay, to be conservative, we can anticipate it maybe go down to here. That's fine. I mean, if it goes down to the bottom of this channel here for this trend line support, that would be fantastic for our trade. But this was just an example of a trend based trade where we had the midpoint of a bearish pin bar reversal to get an advanced entry, which doubled our reward to risk. Remember, what would have been a one to one, i.e., making a maximum of 2%, risking 2%. Um, with our standard conventional entry by entering at the break of the low here where our stop loss above the high we've managed to transform that into a three to one so, um, where we could potentially make six percent instead of two percent thanks to advanced entry at the midpoint of the bearish pin bar reversal and this is a very good little technique which i'd recommend that you do especially when we see overlap between the um open and close and previous bars of the bearish pin bar reversal. Remember, we've seen this range from the bottom to the top of the bar being um, eclipsed by the previous one, two, three, four, four and a half days. So we can reasonably expect the market at some point to retrace the midpoint. And that would suck if you'd already entered at the break of the low only to see the market go against you half percent, sorry, half the way to the top of the bar. And you just think to yourself, hey, I could have just gotten it at this more efficient price. Okay, so we do recommend the advanced entry. Okay, so let's move on. I just want to talk to you about a few opportunities coming into the market. At the moment, I mean, we've got several. We're just going to wait for Euro dollar, actually. This is a... The dollar has been doing nothing... Sorry, the Euro has been doing nothing but range for ages, it would seem. I mean, look at this. It's been ranging for over a year now. So we're just simply waiting for a pullback to one spot 1,500 before we can sell. That's what we're looking for. And um, until we get that, we're not really interested in trading Euro dollar. Uh, however, we do have a couple of other trades on our watch list, and I'm going to share them with you right now. I'm looking at, for example, I'm just waiting for it to load. My apologies. CAD Swiss. And it's a bit of a funny one. On one hand, we had a high low here um, because we were anticipating a reversal with oil, you see. And just, I know we're looking at currencies here, but let's just treat oil as an example of technical analysis. Um, it is a commodity, and we are trying to pick the bottom for oil at the moment. I mean, seasonality dictates that oil is pretty bullish at the moment, and I just want to share with you why we think that is. Because we've got this low here, Oil's at the lowest it's been since the 1980s. And we've got this higher low here with this um, last week closing as a bullish pin bar reversal. So what we were looking to do was simply take the break of the high here, um, stop loss below the low, and trade it long. Because if we look at how uh, this has fared over the past uh, 20 years, if we look at our friend's equity clock, oil has been very bullish indeed over the past 20 years. Mid-February onwards for the six months, following oil has been in a bull run and if we look at equity clock which is just loading the other browser now um you'll see exactly what i mean okay so what we we're looking to do was an inverse of what we did for pound swiss and to simply just wait for the higher low whereas for pound swiss we waited, waited for the lower high looking to go short but we're looking to go long we're waiting for the higher low which we had last week closing against a bullish pin bar reversal we had bullish reversal divergence and we've been having that for the past year and uh, quite frankly, um, it's looking, the evidence is on our side for a long. And what is more is when you see in the news that the BBC or CNN or Bloomberg that they're talking about oil being the lowest and we're in a bear market, you know, you know that as soon as those guys tell the world that's happened, 
that <laughs> there's no one left in the market to sell. So they'll be looking to take profits. It's like your taxi driver. Remember five years ago when gold was peaking, and your taxi driver turns around to you and says, hey, I think how gold's a good investment. When that kind of thing happens, you know there's no one left to buy. And we've seen gold tanking ever since, really. So this is, um, this is oil, and this is how it's historically fed. In February, mid-February onwards to July, September. So if we can pick a reversal point and the acceleration of that, after a higher low in anticipation of a w-shaped double bottom formation remember we've got so much upside to take advantage of with oil look at it all the way up here i'm not saying that it's got to go all the way up there um we could be in a protracted um range but even if we get a retracement with oil before another move to the downside we know full well that we could potentially make money from that um, by locking in profit along the way so this is oil Okay, so what currencies are connected with oil? Well, the Canadian dollar is connected with oil, very heavily connected with oil. This is why dollar CAD has been going up so much because the US dollar has been um, essentially strengthening while the Canadian dollar weakens. Remember, the Canadian dollar is quite heavily pegged to oil, more so than the US dollar, um, it would appear. So what we saw a few days ago in anticipation of a reversal of oil was this bullish pin bar reversal here off this horizontal level for um, CAD Swiss. Remember, it's a two-horse race. If we're going long on the Canadian, we're essentially going long on oil. And if we're seeing that on oil, then we could reasonably say that, hey, the CAD is, sorry, CAD Swiss is as good as an oil long trade. Okay, so moving on. In terms of the US dollar, we are Looking at further dollar strength, I know it's absolutely no secret that um, <laughs> the world is long on the US dollar, but it makes sense to go with the trend as and when. Okay, so we're looking at the weekly here for dollar knock. We can see, let me just get rid of some of these horrible things in the background. Let me get down to a smaller time frame, that might do it. There we go. Remove. So dollar knock. Here we are. So you can see here that on the weekly time frame, we've got this trending market. It's respected the 20 moving average very well. We've got great order angular separation, the 20 above the 50, the 50 above the 200. And yeah, I mean, this does look like it's um, potentially ready to bounce. We've got a inside bars of last week and a conservative trader would see that as indecision at the point where the market could turn around. Remember, every bar preceding that, this inside bar, has had a lower high. So we've had a lower high for one, two, three, four previous weeks. So if the high of the inside bar is broken, that's quite a significant event. So what a conservative trader would do is simply place our order to buy at the high of this bar, stop loss below the low. And that's a decent, if you look at that, that's a decent uh, two to one trade, um, risking 2%. You could potentially make four percent if you target the previous swing high as your first target. Remember, the trend is your friend until the end when it bends. It's the same as if we look at the South African Rand here on the weekly time frame, we can see that actually we've got great order angle and separation between the moving averages here, and that's a sign to us that hey, we've got good speed and momentum in this market. We can see that South African Rand. Uh, US dollar, sorry, versus the South African Rand has respected this um, multiple times. So it got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times it's respected the 20 moving average. And we've been making consistent higher highs and higher lows. So we can reasonably say that actually, if, if we have um, a pullback to this 20 moving average and we get a buy bar, like a bullish pin bar reversal, then we can reasonably expect the market to move off that and we'll go long because there's nothing to say that this isn't trending. And that's the beautiful thing. It's just looking extremely bullish at the moment. And it will just seem very churlish to um, try and pick a short in a trending market, trending to the upside. That would just be a ridiculous thing to do. But I know people, a lot of people do do that kind of thing. They try and pick tops and things like that. Um, before they've even formed, and you know it's a very 
um, silly thing to do. Remember, the trend is your end until the ends when it bends. It's a um, it's a cliche, but it's true. Okay, so moving on. Take a look at the Aussie dollar. Like with the euro dollar, it's um, range bound. So you can see that we're in this rectangular box here, and it's just moving sideways. So when that is the case, we're just simply waiting for the market to come to the top of this rectangle box before we sell. And if that happens, then we'll just, if we get a signal bar that is, we'll look to sell. And that could take the form of a bearish pin bar reversal or a doji. It's a range trade. We can sell. Uh, the top of the range or by the bottom, if we look at dollar sec, we're in one big enormous range at the moment. But like I said, the bias for the US dollar is long at the moment, and we're in a range after a big climb to the upside. This is the US dollar versus the Scandinavian, um, or oh, sorry, the Swedish corona. So it is waiting for price to either come down to here for us to buy or come up to this point for us to sell. We're just waiting. At the moment, the price frustratingly is at the midpoint of this range, and we're just waiting for it to do one thing or the other. Of course, my overall bias, would, no, I prefer to buy at this horizontal level here than to sell this one because we're of the overall trend. And uh, it just makes sense to get on the same side of the market as most people are. Okay. Dollar CAD, well, I would say that if we're picking continuations, um, the weekly time frame is a very good um, one to use for that bullish pin bar reversal, uh, for that higher low if we're looking to go long, and uh, we're just waiting for that on a number of the dollar-based pairs. Okay, those people who are um, who like certainty in the market, then. We're moving on to the Hong Kong dollar. If you like certainty, then it makes sense to buy off a level which has been defended by a central bank. Of course, this is the weekly, by the way. This level here has been protected. You can see it's a very near perfect level of support. So it makes sense to buy on this level. Um, of course, people who do this say you have to wait quite a long time to realize your profit. But after a number of weeks for the Hong Kong dollar, you would have. <laughs> been rewarded rather handsomely for it. But if the central bank did turn around and say they're no longer defending the level, like the Swiss National Bank did this time last year, then you do have um, a bit of a conundrum because then the market could move just as quickly the other way. And a number of trading firms, big funds and institutions wiped out their trading accounts because of the speed, the sheer speed of velocity the market moved after that announcement was made. I just want to take a quick look at the FTSE. Um, again, I just want to show this as an example of a technical play rather than um, a currency. Just treat this as a lesson in price action. You can see here that the FTSE is in a downward trend. We've got the uh, 20 below the 50, the 50 below the 200, and we're making key lower highs and lower lows. So what we're looking to do is to sell the rally in a downward trend, and we've had a free bar retracement and we've got this horizontal level here. As you can see, it's horizontal level, and we're just waiting for our signal bar, i.e. a bearish pin bar reversal to form, rejecting this horizontal level, old support becoming new resistance in a downward trend. If we get the close as a bearish pin bar reversal tonight, then we'll look to sell. Because we'll just wait for this car to go by. We've got a number of things in favor of this for our sale. We've got the retracement, we've got the downward trend being confirmed by the order's angular separation of the moving averages. We've got it testing this horizontal level here at 5,900. So, and in a downward trend, typically old broken support becomes or tests as new resistance. Not only that, we've got the retest, the 0.618 Fibonacci retracement. 0.618 Fibonacci retracement with the previous swing high here. There we go. So it's got a theme with the 0.618. Okay. Previous opportunity to sell was a smash bar here. Just testing um, 6100. There we go. 0.618. Also coinciding with a horizontal level. And now we could see this one. Remember, we've got several 
um, hours to wait for this to close. The FTSE closes at 4.30. So we'll wait for the close here. If it closes as a bearish pin bar reversal, then we've got a decent opportunity to sell the break of the low. And how do I qualify a bearish pin bar reversal? Well, it has the open and close in the bottom third of the bar, ideally, or the bottom half. Okay. And if we've got a succession of bars before that where um, the low hasn't been broken, then that's a bonus because if the low of today is broken, tomorrow, then it's a sign to us that the, the bears are what I'm truly winning in um, pushing the prevailing market to the downside and continuing to do so. Okay, so just waiting this to load. This is New Zealand CAD. This is the trade we're in on the weekly towards the beginning of the year you can see here that this was a bearish pin bar reversal and we took the break of the low here stop loss above the high and then we had this been making lower highs and lower lows ever since remember this one is um, essentially a range trade you can see that the range is pretty big so people who are still in that our clients some of our clients are still in this one um, we're out of break even for this one because we had the spike on week three, unfortunately. But I know some people who um, essentially manage their trades slightly differently. Remember that everyone has their own preference. We've got a, diff a range of different management techniques. So we, we um, yeah, literally it's a sell at the top of the range trade. Euro GBP, finally, we're waiting for buys now after a bear market for such a long time. We're just waiting to simply, after we've had the reversal here, you can see this W-shaped formation. You can see that price is really struggling to uh, break this level. But if we're going to close above it, this level of resistance will be nullified. And we're just simply waiting to buy a pullback. Remember, the best, um, in my opinion, the best pullbacks we have are the ones which test the break of what was the initial reversal pattern. We've got a double... W-shaped double bottom reversal pattern here, the baseline here, the neckline, sorry. So if we're just going to retrace it back to this, testing the neckline as uh, support prior to a move to the upside, then that would be great. But if the market is very strong and the bulls are well and truly in control, then the retracement will be quite a shallow one. And there's nothing wrong with a shallow retracement. This is why, and I know some people won't like this, but when we just get a two, three, or four bar retracement like we have on the daily for... Uh, pound Swiss. Okay, it's already running. <laughs> well, we might <laughs> we might see this bar already run, and it might be too late by the time we wait tonight on the daily. But it's still valid if we trade the break of the low here. We'll just wait for the break of the low, stop loss above the high, and take it down. Even if it's a two free bar retracement, because if the market's only been allowed to retrace a very small distance, then that's a sign that the prevailing trend is a very strong one. Okay, so you know, hopefully we'll get our chance and the market won't run without us tonight. It gives us a memory of pound yen, actually, when we looked at this one on the weekly um, a few weeks ago. We were looking to trade this one, the break of the low here. Um, let's rewind. There we go. So before the close of this bar, this bearish pin bar reversal looked a lot smaller. Um, earlier in the week, we were eyeing it up because it was a, a, sorry, a free bar retracement testing this previous level of support as resistance. So we thought, great, sell the rally in a downward trend. And but the bar closed quite big and really kind of inhibited the reward to risk. So we didn't trade it. But then this happened, of course. So we would have been up about 2% had we traded this one, okay, after two weeks. So that's um, pound yen. But essentially, we're looking to sell um, a lot of the pound crosses, uh, most of them actually. But uh, only, one, only a few of them really have clarity at the moment. Okay, so that is a pound Swiss, and that concludes really our watch list for the moment. We are waiting on oil, but that's not really a currency. But regardless, treat it like it is.
Don't worry, I'm still here. <laughs> Just waiting for this computer. I need to get it defragged. I think, uh, unfortunately, it's, um, yeah, getting up to its limit in, in memory. I need an upgrade or something like that. Anyway, so that concludes our market analysis. So I'm going to ask you this very pertinent question for those people who, especially intraday traders, I just want to ask you, how would you like to transform your trading into a carefree and relaxing hobby when you're just trading it on the daily or weekly time frame, and you can just trade for minutes a day rather than spending hours in front of the screen? I don't know anyone who wouldn't want to, quite frankly. Um, it is the difference between your money working for you and you having to work for your money. Okay, so what we're doing today with FX Street exclusively, and this is for today only until midnight tonight, is we're offering you the chance to uh, become involved with our rapidly expanding trader trading community and become a part of our ultimate program, which has been valued at $1,997. US We're going to give you a test drive for $30 only for one month, and that will give you access to everything that people who've paid over a thousand pounds will get access to all the strategies both basic and advanced 10 hours plus or more like 15 now video tutorials weekly market analysis with a market insider um, access to all sorts of bonuses we've got 40 years trading experience between all of us Julian myself and Kay um, we've got pattern recognition software which you'll get month two we've got a uh, trader hypnosis audio course We've even got a forum um, dedicated to your ongoing support, and we've got qualified traders um, who are essentially running the forum as well. So you'll be in good hands. So if you wanted to become part of our community, just drop us a visit at thelazytrader.com forward slash forex dash training. Read the T's and C's by the Ultimate Program and use the promo code FX Street. And we look forward to welcoming you on board as a lazy trader. Um, but remember, this offer is only open until tonight, okay? So do act fast to avoid disappointment. That's it from me. Have a fantastic afternoon. The sun is shining in London, so if you're in the UK in the southeast, go out and get some rays. It's beautiful out there. And uh, we'll see you again next month if I don't see you beforehand as a part of our membership program. Okay, thank you and take care. Any questions, by the way, drop me a line in the chat box. But for now, that's bye from me.